Hello, Zeph. Welcome to Emo Night Radio. Hello. We're on. We're doing it oh, now. Oh, we're doing it. Yes. Uh, congratulations on being 30 minutes late. Thank you. <laughs> Where do you guys I look? released one album and I entered my, my diva era. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, it's, I do that. No, but I, I, woke up, I, got, I always get distracted when I'm getting ready. Yeah, what time do you go to bed? That's one of the questions that I have asked. It depends. Uh, anywhere between 1 and 6 a.m. What's a normal hour? Like, what's the average? Is it like normal? Five. Like you go to bed at five. It's really bad. I like go to bed at five and I wake up at like noon. Do you do drugs? Just prescription. That's actually that's also one of my questions. I'm knocking. I hear you want to hear my here? I'll I'll reel off my. All right. Okay. Like, so in the morning, I take. 100 milligrams of Lamictal and uh, 30 of Vyvanse. And then when to go to sleep, I take uh, 600 milligrams of Gabapentin. Or else I wake up having a panic attack. Let's go. I take 300 and I take an Ambien. I wrote all of these questions Wait, on 300 it. of what? Uh, gabapentin. Yeah. Gabapentin is where it's at. We're Gabapentin sisters. So I, I, and I but I take uh, Ambien also, which makes me forget everything and also eat things and don't remember. So I wrote all of these questions. Vyvanse is the opposite for me. I forget to eat. So no, like, I take Ambien. Like Ambien, like, I know, like, but that'll does knock that make you out. You eat more. You yeah, you things? just forget that you eat. Well, you basically. So what happens I is to eat. Yeah, you. For, you well, basically, what happens is you have to like detective yourself in the morning and be like, all right, well, who did I did I call anybody? Did I text anybody? And then so you like to, black out. Yeah, but That's like so funny. Yeah, but then it makes you eat in the middle of that. I had an ex girlfriend. Who I would make, I would forget doing this the entire time. I would make her plates of condiments and be like, this condiments? is- Condiments? Like, you just take anything in your refrigerator and you make it into a meal. It's like a disgusting thing. The subreddit for Ambien is awesome. It's just disgusting people on the internet. Congratulations on your album, <laughs> Character Development. Thank you. You want to, let's, let's just knock this, this, let's get the, let's get the, wait, how many interviews have you done for this uh, album so far? For the album specifically, I'm not sure. Not that many. I feel like it's just like general interviews that I've done. So this is the best one. Cameron, this is the best interview that yeah, you've done. Yeah, yeah, 100%. All right, so let, let's... Verified. Why don't we talk... Let, let's, let's rock. So... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was so late. I was like speed, speed running. Do... Okay, question. What went into making the album? Because it sounds vastly different from your old stuff. Like... Does it? Yes. You have guitars. A lot of I have guitars. guitars. Yeah. Well, the the stuff I'm making now is even, like, so much more different, I feel like. Like, now, now, after yeah, like you now, put now. the album out, you were like, all right, now I'm done, I'm going to do something kinda, else? To be honest, like, kind of over this album, because I made all these songs, like, two years ago. Yeah, it'd be like that. Yeah. That's why I'm kind of like, <laughs> it's out. Have you listened to <laughs> it <enjoy>. recently? <laughs> My album? Yeah. You know what's funny? Uh... Every single time I release something on Spotify, I like I immediately I can't listen to it anymore because I listened to it so many times um, before, like leading up to it, make sure I was like liking everything. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite song off of it? Mm, maybe maybe game. Okay. Or like everyone else, I don't know. It depends. Because even looking back now. The st like the ones that I really liked kind of seem or backseat they seem kind of like juvenile because I feel like I've grown a lot in the past like two years since I wrote it and a lot of the lyrics of like like you don't like me like that for example it like sounds a little bit like immature but like I guess like I said this before I think somewhere but like feelings like don't expire so I guess they're still true it's just the way that I said them is very like I guess it was straightforward I was gonna ask so, you. I was gonna ask you a little bit about it, like lyrically because you do use a lot of like current slang and online do culture. I? Yeah, you use like like yeah compared to other music, which is jarring to me. I'm old. I'm like a an old person. Wait, so, give me an example. Anything what, like the, about like, I let you hit it raw line. Things like that, right? Like or <laughs> on talking about like online presence, right? Like I grew up listening to things where the internet didn't exist. So like mm. you incorporate a lot of current culture into your songs like do you find is what's your audience like are they do you find that it a lot more adolescent because of like how you speak and how you sing um kind of they're kind of in my like based on like what i've seen they're kind of in my age group they're like my biggest like age group is like 18 to 24 so 
kind of i mean i feel like it makes sense because a lot of my music is like coming of age type like feelings and stuff so yeah were you a good kid when you grew up when you were growing up define good kid well i was a bad kid i was i'm a pastor's daughter so you were a bad kid yeah <laughs> so you like you were, so you were like i'm gonna do everything the opposite not really i was very um mild like, I didn't go to parties or anything. Like, I didn't do anything exciting until I moved here a year ago. Yeah. And I kind of, like, exhausted my, my party air within the first month. Of being here? Yeah. At least you didn't, like, go super, super hard. A lot of people, like, burn out in, like... That's what happened to me. Oh, yeah. Like... I burnt out after a month. What do you do now? Like, what's your day-to-day look like here? <laughs> like, if you're not going out and partying I now... I was at, like, home... Or like my like friends' houses. I don't like don't do anything. I like, I don't know why I get scared to go places. Were you scared to come here? No, I, it's like um going anywhere new for me. It makes me anxious. Like, I don't know. It's like anything outside my routine. I'm like, um, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to do that. And then also, I kind of like dissociate if I'm like in a new place that I've like never been before. It's weird. My brain is, like, not functioning properly. Until, like, a certain time, until you take the Vyvanse, or just in general? Just in general. Yeah, same. I know. You know people who are really, really good at Excel sheets and putting, like, shit like that? Like, being organized? Yeah. I'm the opposite of that. <laughs> like, that is the opposite of me, and it doesn't make any sense to me. But the way that I look at it is, like... I write a lot of lists now that I'm on Vyvanse. On your notes? I write a lot of notes and I write a lot of like lists, like to do lists because I, oh my God, my ADHD is so bad that, um, I'll take right now I have a cork board and I pinned my like grocery shopping receipt to it to see like what food I have and what food I've eaten because otherwise I'll like completely forget that I have it. And then I cross out stuff as I eat it. Do you, um, Do you want an, a hard-boiled egg? <laughs> I don't like eggs. Really? Unless they're, like, the Korean steamed egg or, like, the soft-boiled, like, soy egg in, like, ramen or, like, a quiche. Like, basically, if I can't taste the egg... You like the egg? Yes. Okay, see, that's the... So now we're different. Yeah. Hard-boiled eggs, I don't understand people who like hard-boiled eggs. But I could eat... Or, like, egg salad. I just don't get it. Well, I here's here I don't understand this thing about things that aren't salads. They're just like we're gonna add mayonnaise to something and yeah. then call it a salad, yeah. which is a disgusting thing. <laughs> like you know what mayonnaise is? It's literally just oil. Isn't it oil and eggs? Yeah, it's like oil so and it's like, like eggs in egg sauce. Mm. Yeah, it's really disgusting. Yummy. But I mean, if you're if you have like a tiny, tiny bit of white trash in you, you like love potato salad. Like I oh, love yeah. potato Macaroni salad just salad. because I've got like a little bit of like white trash in me. I'll I like coleslaw sometimes if it's good. If there's like not too much like mayonnaise in it. You like a vinegary, a vinegary no, slaw? I just like cabbage. Okay. What do you Okay. So we've gotten past the 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 set. I already talked about my album for 2 seconds. Now we're talking about All right, let's talk about salad. it. Hold on. Let me I have no, more no, no, of it. No, 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 no. Hold on. You're my first interview back since I got a major surgery, so I'm very surgery? excited. Surgery? Yeah. What surgery? Oh. I I got both of my hips replaced. What? Yeah. Isn't that fucked up? That sounds really scary. It was the scariest thing in the entire world. I what, was you, what are they replaced with? Metal. Like titanium. I just came from physical therapy. That's kind of cool, though, because you're like a cyborg inside. <laughs> yeah, I was worried because like we- a secret. How do you go through metal detectors? I was just going to tell you. They don't give a shit. Like, I thought that I was going to have to, like, print out something like a dog. Like, a, you know, like a pet, like when you go through the airport- but I was like, hey, I've got, like, metal in my legs. And I thought, I was like, I don't need to print anything. I can just show them these, like, awful scars. That was also, the first thing. you see when you walk through, like, the area that's, like, it, like has, like, the suspicious area. I've gotten patted down because I had a tampon in one time. Yeah, they'll do that. That's mm -hmm. a perfect reason to get patted down. Yeah. There are free tampons in the bathroom if you want to steal as many as you can before you leave. Oh, here? Yeah, my goal <laughs> whenever I come into Amazon is to steal as many things as I can. Wow, feminist king. Yeah, before <laughs> I get, before they ask me to escort me out. I wish I was good at shoplifting. My sister's really good at it. She's a girl. I'm too, yeah. Girls are great at shoplifting. Yeah, I'm too That's scared. True. Girls are great at shoplifting. My I'm, roommate also, he's good at shoplifting. Yeah. I, I just I, don't have that skill. I'm also really bad at lying. 
What are you good at? Music? You are Art? good at music. No, you are good at music. I can knit and crochet too and do photography. I feel like every I'm good at pretty much every area of art except for like what is it called? The pottery that you like the wheel. Pottery. Yeah, cuz one time my mom took me to a pottery class and I could I was the only one who couldn't make my cup stand up and I started crying. Cuz that's the first time I experienced <laughs> like oh my god, I'm bad at something related to art. I've never thought that I'm good at anything. Which is great. This is the only thing that I think I'm actually good at. Talking? Yeah, I like it. I like it. But you want to know what? It's once I, you have to, I have to get in it and then I'm, I like it. But like just being in here, it, once you put a microphone in front of me, I can go forever. And I think I really, really like that. But it's, wait, did you always know, let's stop talking about me. Did you always know you wanted to do music? No. I knew that I liked it. Like, also about the talking thing, I feel like I'm good at talking now, but. I feel like I've talked about this before, but like my fun fact is I didn't speak until like eighth grade. Like I had like selective mutism, but past that, um, what's it called? You just chose not to? Not really chose. It's like I when I was around anyone other than my family or like three friends, like if, if they were even in my like presence, I could not make sound come out of my mouth. It was like it would like stop. Like, do you know what's the phrase? Like choking on like your, it like stops in your throat or something. Do you know what I, I'm talking about? Yeah. N- th- no, but yes, kind of. I like couldn't, it would like be here and then I couldn't make it come out. Like I couldn't speak. So I was just like silent. I was known as being like the silent person. And like my, like I was homeschooled, but I had to go to like this homesteader thing where like we had like, it was just a bunch of home homeschooled kids like a couple days a week. You don't give homeschool vibes. Thank you. Is the thing. And there's definitely people that give homeschool vibes. I ask myself sometimes, because I have a combination of, like, ADHD, uh, anxiety, and BPD, uh, apparently a lot of, like, girls get misdiagnosed with, like, that and, like, autism and stuff. And, like, I'm like, I have a lot of autistic traits, I feel like, but also I think I'm just homeschooled. Um, I don't... So you're, like, every single one of my ex-girlfriends. BPD... Anxiety. Not the BPD. That's what I, I'm never being in the crazy ex-girlfriend allegations. Are you? Crazy ex-girlfriend? Mm, I'm in therapy now, so I don't. I hope not. I well, don't think so. Next time you break up with somebody, we'll have you back in and we'll figure out exactly how crazy you are. Okay. What's the craziest thing that you've ever done to an ex-boyfriend? Or girlfriend? Uh, I haven't done... Mm. Let's get it out. Cause I'll, I don't want to say the context, but I have gotten the police called on me. Let's go. Yeah. Four. Oh, you can't, oh, you don't want to talk about the context? Oh, wait, well, okay. I've gone to police calling me twice, but the first time was because, like, what is it? People were saying I was, like, a threat to myself. The second time, people were saying I was a threat to others, but I, like, wasn't. I was just manic. And, like, I have intrusive thoughts really bad, and I was saying them out loud, and that scared people. Have you ever been to jail? No. They're rude there, so you don't want to go. <laughs> they're rude there. there. Yeah, they're that's the only reason I don't want to go. They're super rude. <laughs> they, they like you know in the uh, like in movies when they walk you down the middle of the thing. Yeah, and they're, like the cell. Yeah, they're rude. They do say shit to you, and I was like, I remember looking to the side and being like, "You guys are so rude." Like you went to jail? Yeah, a couple times. For for what? Uh, I got a DUI when I was seventeen. Then I went to jail in Mexico for urinating in public, <laughs> which was bad. Like, it's bad. Mexico jail is bad. And then I, it was so bad that I decided to go back to jail in Mexico for my, uh, my friends. I didn't do anything this time. I know that this is, it's not, I didn't do anything. My friends were just fighting and I was just like with them. So you went voluntarily? No, I was just like with my group of friends. I see. Like I'm, I can't fight. I'm like five feet tall. I'm not like. <laughs> there's nothing. I can't do anything physical to anybody. I mean, me either. I am very weak. Yeah. Um, yeah. You look weak. Thank you. Yeah. Do you like touring? Be frail. No, I hate being on stage. That's what I was. Gonna, I was gonna ask you, like, what, like, what? I was going to ask. So you. many people ask me when I'm going on tour. I'm like, tour? What's that? So what? So what's the goal? Like. You I don't wanted- have one. Oh, back to the music thing. Yeah. Right? Uh, it was an accident. This is an accident. Same. I, I've i never, like, it was never my goal to, like, be a musician or, like, be, like, a star or, like, have followers. It was all an accident. Like, everything. Like, me, like, getting followers and, like, me 
well, I was making music on purpose, just like for fun. And then it got picked up and now I'm like, I was thrown into like this. So all this is an accident. But because I started out with like no goal in mind and I don't really, I still don't really have a goal. Um, when I have like label meetings, they don't realize how much I like don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Because they always try to like impress me and like, they're like, oh, we can turn you into a star. And we like, offer you all this. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I don't care about being a star. Like, you could, like, offer me all this stuff, and I'm like, if if it means, like, I have to, like, sacrifice my, like, creative, uh, what is it called? Process, or you're, like, you're you're trying to, yeah. What is it called when you're, like, being genuine, like? Authenticity. Yeah, kind of. If I have to, like, sacrifice any of that or, like, uh, meet certain, like, deadlines or, like, strict, like, constraints, I'm like, there's no, there's no point for me then. And so, like making music, so well, I like don't I don't know. I was uh, so what do you so I think that we probably think the same about because there's you know you've been in the music industry for a couple of years now, right? Have you gone yes. into like sessions and shit where they're like, let's just throw this lyric on here and get it done, and there's no like longevity and it's annoying. Um, like, do you- I kind of turn down almost every session that's offered to me because I'm like, I know how annoying I am and I'll like all, cause I make all my own stuff and I just know if I get in somewhere with like a producer, I will backseat produce, which is like really annoying. Cause I'm like, I already know what I want to do and I can do it. So like, what's the point of this? I know that they can like offer like ideas and I have had some, like a couple really good sessions, but also I did have like one where, uh, he was like trying to like, make my lyrics so specific and he's like it has to be every line has to be exactly the same amount of syllables and like you shouldn't say this and you should like do this instead and I was like that doesn't make any sense for what I'm what I feel though like it don't I don't know because I write music for myself not for other people I don't write music to like oh my god and it got kind of tense because he was like well then if you do if you write it the way you want to it won't be a hit and I was like I don't care and he was like well that's my job. And I was like, okay, well, this is my song. So yeah, I don't we, know. Should we dox him? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't mean to like sound like a brat, but it's I'm not like, bratty. it's my I don't, make sense. I don't think it's bratty. I dude. make it for myself. Yeah. I don't think it's bratty. I've gone into sessions and like they're, they're producers that just like squeeze words in. They're like, we have to make, it's like a hit formula. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's so, you can tell when you listen to songs on the radio. And I think listening through character development, I was like, mm, she definitely wrote this. Right. Like, I think that it's a really authentic album and I feel like no, it is. What? Why are you making the face? I mean, yeah, it is. But I just like looking back on the lyrics, I'm like, oh, my God, I could have done so. I could do so much better now. It's kind of embarrassing. It's okay. It's fine. because Look, if I look back at like the things that I did two years ago, like cringe. Yeah, if I look exactly. back at the thing that I look like did a week ago, I'm, like, I cringe. The, like I it's another thing that's really embarrassing is I because I write it for myself. I forget that, like, the people who I write the songs about are going to hear it. And it's so funny because, like, they'll be like, oh, my God, I love the album. I've had it on repeat. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is so (laughs) – thanks. The people that you wrote the songs about? Yeah, but they don't – some of them don't know, but some of them do. Which is, like, I'm just going to pretend, like, I don't know that. Is it mainly, like, exes? No. You know what's so funny? What? Most of the album is about some like someone I never even dated, <laughs> which I feel like you could tell by the lyrics. What fantasy stuff? No, there's like a, and then the album's like about a bunch of people. That's why it's called character development because it's me going through like different things. But I also think, well, I'm not gonna diagnose it. I'm not gonna diagnose it. Whatever. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> wait, wait no, actually, you want to know what? Do it. Do it. Okay. Just from knowing you for 20 minutes feels like a really appropriate name for an album because of your childhood, being raised as a preacher's daughter, not being able to speak, and now doing all of this shit, writing music, and where you are now. I think that that is character development. Yeah. I. It's funny because I called it that because I felt like I'd like changed so much over the time, which I did. But even like since then, like those two years, I've changed even like so much more that like looking back at that, I'm like this. I don't know. That's the one one thing that really frustrated me about this album is because it was delayed so much. I feel like it doesn't represent me that much anymore. 
Yeah. I mean, a lot of the songs do, but I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like. Look, I feel like it's behind. Like it's my image is like behind. You are going lagging. to continue to change, right? Like we're yeah. going to change. I feel like we change until the day we die, right? And then like we'll never be sad. Like I feel like you're a person a little about like me. We're like we're never going to be satisfied with like what's in front of us right now. And we're going to continuously be like, what well, do we do next? How do we do this next? What's that's not- Sorry, I'm what? interrupting. I was going to say, that's not really how I see It's like, I talked to my therapist about this. I was like, I don't know why I feel like the need to control everybody's perception of me at all times. So it's like, if if this album represents me two years ago and everybody thinks that's me now because they're just seeing it for the first time, I'm like, no, no. That's why I have my like little YouTube channel. That's why I, when people ask me like what where they can hear my music, I say my YouTube channel first because it's more up to date because I would like upload the little song I made the day I made it because it's like a diary, like in real time. I really like, Cameron knows this, you write like the perfect, like your older stuff is like one minute and I'm like, that's a perfect length for a song. (laughs) Exactly. You love a one minute song. I'm like, if I say, and people are like, please make it a full song. I'm like, it is a full song because I said everything I need to say in this one minute. And I think... Uh, okay, I started making the songs in one minute because I would post them on Instagram. And back then, the limit was one minute. Smart. So I that kind of was like a creative like challenge to me to, for me to say everything I could in the most precise, like concise way possible, which is why I feel like I've learned how to make my lyrics hit harder because I had to fit as much as I could say and like make the biggest impact within a minute. But it, but because I did that, now it's really hard for me to make like a long song because I'll say everything I need to say within like a minute and a half, two minutes, and then I'm like, even if I do like the whole like song structure thing with like a verse, a chorus, a verse, a chorus, a bridge, chorus, it's still like under two minutes. The uh, songs on this album are like three, yeah, and that a was half hard. Minutes, I that was, was hard, and it, coming from like a minute. See, that makes what I was saying is like you, the minute thing. You're like, I'm gonna shove all this in because it's like that's how long it takes to be on Instagram. That's what I was saying in the beginning. You are, that's like a new way of thinking, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's not the way that people that were writing songs a long time ago were doing. They weren't like, oh, I'm gonna write this for. Socials, yeah, because right? I wasn't writing it to like release. I was writing it for fun to post. Like I wasn't like taking it like super seriously. That's also why on my SoundCloud, all the pictures are like Kermit memes, or, like Kermit pictures. Because I was like, I just know if I really start taking this seriously, I'm gonna burn out, and I'm gonna like try too hard and like put pressure on myself. So I'm like, I'm just not gonna put any pressure on this. So that's why that's why like the whole industry stuff scares me because i'm like i just still want to keep doing it for fun i want it to be fun it's literally scary it's scary i I have this conversation with my business partner every single day like every time we go do something and it's stressful and weird and scary we i always go in being like remember this is fun like this is a fun job we have a fun job Mm -hmm. like remember that this is a fun thing that we get to do Mm -hmm. right are your parents proud of you for doing this or they think you fucking (laughs) they don't give a shit they're like as basically they're like they see me as like successful if I'm financially stable and independent. So they're like, okay, cool. You're so you're fine. so you're good. Yeah, they- but like it's really impossible to impress anybody in my family. I'll tell like one time I told my mom, like, okay, because again, I this was never like a goal of mine. I didn't think ahead like that. When I did my first ever music video, I had no idea like what was happening or like even any ideas for a music video because I never thought I'd get to a point where I had to make one. But when I told my mom for the first ever one I had to make, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to L.A. to to make this video. during, And she, she, she wasn't like, oh, my God, that's so cool. She was just like, what days? You know? Yeah, she was. Yeah. It's just like whatever. <laughs> uh, Okay, we have to f- let's blast through some wild ones. Okay, ready? Okay, yes. Rapid fire. Do you have any weapons? I used to. I don't know what happened to it. I had like a little stabby like keychain thing. That's a perfect and thing And I've been to looking have. for a, like a switchblade just to keep in my yeah, bag. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and just need that knife. We should go get knife. We should go knife shopping. <laughs> We should. You want to go knife shopping? Yeah. Okay. Do you like to drive? No. Me neither. I just got my California license, though. Has That's anybody great. called you Led Zeflin? No, but I can be called Zeph Bezos. Okay. My name is Zeph. What are some other artists that peep? Man, you could really tell I was on Ambien when I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> what, is it? what are you listening to? That's the easiest way to phrase, like, what I am asking. It's This is a paragraph of me being like, if, what, are, like, what are you listening to? Uh, right now, just, like, a lot of, like, Ben Kessler and 
I don't know. It changes so much because like a week ago or a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to a lot of like Food House. Do you know that? Food House? Yeah. No. I okay, don't well, know. they're really good. Do you know? But I feel food? like they're so different. Like my range of artists that I listen to is like very different. I might. I mean, mine is too. Yeah. Like I. So it really depends. I'm also listening to Lisa, the like Japanese artist. Yeah. Let's she's really go. Cool. We love Lisa in yes. this house. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else. Ba, 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 ba. Are you planning on? I think the big dog pissed on these pants. Um, <laughs> I smell piss. Is the thing. <laughs> And it's not me. Like, I didn't. Are you sure? Yeah. Like, I would know. But it's I, on you. It's on me. Would you know if you took Ambien? Yeah. The thing is, is, like, I've never pissed the bed or shit the bed or barfed the bed. Like, I'm pretty decent at. You never, you never pissed the bed when you were a child? Um, sh- no, but you want to know what I did do? We had this basement in New York, right? I grew up in New York. And there was. Uh, that's where I'd hang out and watch the TV. Basement. Yeah, like the base, scary basement. It's like, you know, we had like a TV down there and mm-hmm. like whatever. And my parents had this old fish tank, like a big fish tank. And you since pee I, in the fish tank? I didn't want to go upstairs oh my God. to go to the bathroom, so I'd piss in this fish tank and hide it behind. Were like, there fish in there? No, no, it was okay, an empty I was fish tank. Say, I was like, Thank God. <laughs> no, it was an empty fish tank. But Have you seen that thing? It's like mom found the piss drawer with the meme. Never the mind. what? There's never mind. Never mind. <laughs> show it to me. That. I'm not going to. I'll show you. I'll show you after. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. We have to go. Uh, plug your YouTube channel. It's just Seth. Okay. All right. What? Well, how? Like, if somebody listening to this or watching this, it's just like I'm you... really bad at self promoting. Okay, People, well, it's like what? a running gonna, joke on Twitter that I, like I don't promote my music. Which I feel like I talk about it a lot now because my album's out. But, like, before, I'd go viral so much and I would never, like, you know the thing where it's like, oh, my God, this blew up. Listen to my, I never do that. Okay, well, I, I'm going to let you know that I really, my favorite song on the album is, sorry, I'm not. Really? Yes, I like that song a lot. What? Is that bad choice? No, I'm just surprised. Why? Because it's, like, from girls' perspective? Well, I mean, sort of, and also it's the one that I think feel like it's it's not mixed great, just because I didn't know how to re- record things well at the time. Well, but, I'm not listening to the mix. I'm listening to the song. Okay, I'm glad because that's something I was really paranoid. Yeah, about, I'm not, just because I have a lot of like music friends. I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna judge me so hard. No, like I think that's also an annoying thing about LA is like people are like the mix, the master, blah blah blah, yeah. all this shit, and I'm like, dude, if the song is good, the song is good. It can sound like garbage. But I mean, yeah, that's why Forever and Always. I'm like, why does it have so many streams? It sounds like ass. So, someone said it sounded like I recorded it in a shoebox, and I was like, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's good. I think that that rocks. Okay, we have to go. I have to get on this call. Seth, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Sorry, this is so rushed. This is fun. I think this is a great interview. That's yeah, great. You just have me back for like the second half later. Do you do you want to co- <laughs> Yeah, come back. You can co-host a show and we can pick a bunch of songs and do actual real music questions. You don't want to do that. This was way we more can fun. Talk about egg salad again. <laughs> you also, sure you don't want an egg? I'm sure. Okay. Thank do you. Though. Do you want an egg, Carlos? Okay. Okay. YouTube channel, Zeph. Anything else? Character development out now. Not planning on touring. Not right now, I don't think. Is there Unless any, someone holds me at gunpoint. Is there any tea you can spill that we can use? On what? In Give general. Subject. Just in general. Like, is there any tea that we can be like... Because people at Eman are going to be like, cut something for TikTok and be like, eh, tease it. I don't know. No secrets? I do, but none that I can say. Okay, well, this is the place to say it. This is a safe space. This is a safe space mm-hmm. as you, like, publish it on TikTok. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a safe space. Actually, I don't know. I don't think I have anything. I'm not that interesting. I think you are. And I think a lot of other people that are going to watch this and listen to your album are going to think you are interesting. You should talk to your therapist about this. About which part? You not thinking that you're interesting. I've talked about my imposter syndrome a lot. You want to know what? I'm just going to keep going. What about your call? I don't, I like, I, I do have to take do your it. call on the podcast. Should I? It's like a harm reduction 
call. What? <laughs> what does that mean? So basically, <laughs> I'm I'm drug addict, right? Not currently, but in general. And so, so a lot of the times, people will that run like harm reduction companies will call and be like, "What should we do for that?" Like we have a, this. I don't like, know what harm reduction is. It's. I think I'm not really sure what this call is about, but it's just like how to maybe how to something about Narcan or doing drugs responsibly. I can't, but maybe other people can. Can you? You can do drugs responsibly. I don't, I don't have an addictive personality, so I really don't understand how people, like, I can't fathom how people get addicted to stuff, because I'm the opposite, where I get tired of stuff really fast, like, I'll get sick of it, which is why the second half of that album is, like, I promise to stay with you until I leave, I'm like, I'm sorry for wasting your time, because I'm like, oh, oops, I'm bored of you, sorry, I don't, not sorry, I'm like, it's your fault for liking me more than I liked you, like, it's, I don't know, it's really bad, it was really bad. Okay, where are you at now in comparison to where you where you were when you were? I'm in a this? relationship, <laughs> so character development. <laughs> I was really okay, like comp- like so emotionally unavailable for such a long time, though it was like, and I. But the thing is, that's why I'm like it's your fault because I would be so upfront about it. I'd be like, okay, I don't want to date you. Like, I don't want to be your girlfriend, but like we can like do this. And they're like, okay, and then they start getting possessive and treating me like their girlfriend, and they get upset when I like do stuff. I'm like, I told you from the beginning. Yeah, you were up front. Yeah, I'm like, I told you I'm not going to be doing all this, so bye. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like I have a right to like do that if I'm upfront about it. Yeah, of course you do. That's what everybody should do. I'm pretty bad at that. Is the thing Being upfront? Yeah. See, I don't lead people on. Yeah, I'm not good at it. Like, I just, like, I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. So, oh, I don't care. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. But so, it's only, you know what I realized? What? I realized looking back on my lyrics, I, like, I have a song that I just, that I, like, made recently that's not anywhere yet. Um, uh, It's about, like, I want, if something ever happened where, me and someone like broke up or like I left somebody, I would want them to be s- devastated. Or like if I died, that's what it's called. If I died, if I died, I'd want them to like, again, be like devastated. And I want them to like want to die. You know what I mean? But then yes. on the other hand, or uh, it's really toxic. Cause I'm like, cause if, if I like leave or if I died or something and they're not that upset, I'm going to think that they never actually cared about me, which is funny. Cause I'm the opposite where I'm like, if I leave someone, no, no, if, if they, if someone that I like leaves me, then I want to die. So I'm like, it's really hypocritical, kind of. You know what I mean? Have you ever had to apologize for the way that you've acted in somebody's dreams? No. Okay. I don't think people <laughs> dream about me. I don't think people care about me that much. Okay. Well, you, the person that you're in a relationship with, obviously, probably cares about you. I'd hope so. Because then you would want to die. Uh-huh. Seth, thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> Character development is out now. Uh, I really appreciate it. Let's do round two. This is fun. This is the best interview you guys have done for the album. I think it's the only one. Besides, well, everybody. The, besides the AP. And to reference my own song, Second Best of Two is actually just last. So. What? what? Wait, what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mind. I have to get, hold on. Let me get on this. Too. Thank you so much for coming in, DM1I Radio. I really like you. Let's, thank you. Thank you. Have me, ha- just have me back and we can talk more about yeah. stuff that's not music. Yeah, that's what I like. Okay, thanks for coming in. Thank you.